Okay, so guys, welcome on the Psycraft server. The farm has been built over the Christmas break. It literally took a day to do it. It's not the most complex of the designs. It's fairly easy to do, fairly easy to make. And we also have a rudimentary sorting system for now. Just for now. And as you can see, the printer is not yet finished. Mango is working on it. Still is spawnable, which means that we can use the farm. It's just the AFK spot is moved to above the farm, which makes all this area more than 120 blocks away from the player. So the farm works just fine. And we have this rudimentary, as I said, sorting system for special items. So mostly is clownfish. We also want to collect a bunch of those other rare drops from fish. And here we have glazed terracotta. Glazed terracotta is an awesome block that can be used to trigger the farm. When you drop a piece of glazed terracotta in the nether side, what will happen, this will essentially trigger and then will trigger the farm. So if you don't want to have mob spawning or you want to have them spawning, you can very easily trigger it while operating it from the nether. And what about the guardians? Uh, what about the uh, clownfish? So one of the goals for the server is to collect all the items and double chest of it. And I kind of throw in a gauntlet <laughs> last time and say define a proper double chest. So proper double chest is essentially a double chest of shulker boxes of items. It was kind of funny, but it's not funny in terms of the clownfish. Because at this point, it's the one of the rarest items in the game. In order to get a clownfish, you can get a fish, which is very ineffective. Or you can kill guardians, and the guardian, when killed by a player with looting 3, has 0.11% to drop a clownfish. So it's easy to calculate. So with 93,000 clownfishes uh, that would fit in a proper double chest, it means that we would need to kill 85, 84 million guardians. And it seems like an impossible goal. However, as I said, this farm, the single player of King, this produces about 30 guardians per second. With two mob caps, it's 60. So with two mob caps, 60 guardians per second, that gives us about 16 days of AFK, which is not impossible. And you can even rank it up to three times the mob cap with 90 guardians per second. However, there is one thing that shows up quite often, especially for me, and my connection is what I like to call a net lag. So we have a bunch of types of lag in the game, TPS lag, FPS lag, but there is something new here that I haven't seen yet, which is the net lag. There's also one thing to note here, that in the design that I've shown in my own world, this portal was quite close to the farm. It wasn't that far away from it. And that touch is like, why do you need it so far away? And that only is for the looks. I mean, right now the farm looks... Okay, let's be honest. It looks really, really bad. It's just a blob of some random blocks that <laughs> generate mobs. However, I plan to make it pretty. Because the most powerful mob farm in the world should be also the best looking one. So let's go to the other side and see what's being built so far in terms of the collection. This hasn't been shown in the time lapses. Yeah, so we have now just one big ugly empty room. We have a bunch of random pillars. One of them should have a ladder. Oh, we don't have a ladder. This might be a problem. Just ender pearl to it. Okay, so. What we have here is we have the same way. We have our collection for normal drops. So all the guardians just drop here to get killed, just for drop only. We have the XP side built and it should be all functional as well. And here is the looting side. I changed a little bit item collection. There was no the soul sun here, but the soul sun helps a little bit. Let me turn this on. And yeah, and I also made sure that we have only yes, one switch to turn everything on, so we can get the guardians and can flick it in one place. This helps to separate XP orbs and drops better, so then there is less chance of an XP orb to spill and to go to the overworld. So here's where having multiple accounts helps, so I can just take my character here, and I can just AFK slaying fishes while the other account can just build the stuff around it and make it pretty. Okay guys, so we are back on the server, kind of in the middle of the fishing operation, <laughs> as I may say. We are past 42 million fish, so we are half the way through. 
As you can see I have almost nothing on me and that's because I have found out that having anything on you when you're doing it, it's pretty deadly. So here's a screenshot of me tying while doing it so we can learn a bunch of things by looking at it. First of all, I starve to death and the reason is very simple. When you're AFKing and something goes wrong like an update on your computer pops in and you remember you have to hold the right click with your cooked fish in order to collect more cooked fish you have to have whatever the fire enchanting on your sword in order to get the cooked fish and then you click with your left click button which means that if your client gets out of sync or if your client loses focus because you get a random update in your world whatever computer what can happen like in this case what happened is my right hold button didn't register for the game for some odd reason so I essentially starved to death so learn my lesson not holding too much on me and we also can learn another thing from that picture and is that you can see my score is 23 million points and my guardians killed is 21 which means that we are essentially getting about one point of XP per guardian which essentially means that we are trashing in the lava pretty much 90 to 95 percent of the XP which is actually to be expected, I'm not uh, surprised about it. So yeah, but we get all the clownfish. So we are here in the nether part of the farm and I already started doing a little cleanup over here. So I st uh, so this is not the terrain, I, mean, I wouldn't be able to make such a custom terrain. This is essentially taken from the game. I just took some seed, select some area with hills and desert and created this place over here and what happens here we have a portal here in the middle of this temple where all the guardians are going through so it's a nice touch so this is our a kind of a desert temple made to look like a ocean monument and we'll make the ocean monument on the other side to look like a desert temple and I want to replicate this terrain to the last bit including the floating sand that's why I uh, made all those supports here to make those floating sands using two tall flowers and now we can start making them. So if I drop this dirt or punch this flower at the bottom, this won't update the sand, which means that we have this cool effect of sand floating. And if I do it in correct order, we shouldn't have any accidents and we have this cool floating sand. This is something that will go away in 113. There is no, at least known easy way to do it. Yeah, so we better do it right now. And this way our area will look actually pretty, pretty decent. However, the room is still squared. I still, still use the room that they dig out for the farm itself. I don't think it's going to look good this squarish, which means that we'll probably have to go with something rounder. Maybe like a big dome. Move this piston ball to the side a little bit or just basically cut it off at some point earlier so it doesn't go right into the middle. So we have really nice view over this ocean desert temple so that's the idea for the upper part for the lower part though you can go here for now there's an access to the with the ladder doesn't matter we have a different approach oh yeah so I played with black concrete and it's awesome <laughs> you don't see it you don't see where it's going and it even looks good with like default whatchamacallit um, nether fog this is just some weird red glow to it rather than pitch black but doesn't matter so it looks like void there's nothing below us but actually there is land so that's nothing to be worried about and as we can see there's a bunch of chests here this one is a clownfish you can see we're halfway through all the we have half the clownfish we need to package it up into the shulker boxes however i'm keep collecting other types of fish we have all the raw salmon this one needs to be cooked for the cooked salmon we have all the puffer fish and i kept collecting all the puffer fish and salmons just to have enough of each one of them i think it's pretty cool <laughs> uh, there is absolutely no reason why i'm collecting the other fish i just want to collect it because by the time we have hundred thousand clownfish we should have one million salmon and half a million puffer fish even without very easy fish farms that you can build in 113 just using this kind of broken mechanic of getting a random fish with guardians at a very 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 low rate we can still get crap loads of them using looting and this farm so that's pretty cool stuff 
as I said earlier, the farm can be toggled right now, on and off with from the nether as well. If we drop a piece of glazed terracotta, we will essentially be able to trigger the farm. As well, like if you are here, AFKing, slaying the fishes like that. If you think that it's a good idea to stop for a moment, you can just drop a piece of glazed terracotta and you will be fine because the farm will stop eventually after a short while. Also here I've put a little bit warnings because as we've seen before, when the fishes are here you don't know a thing where you are looking really, so you have to align yourself roughly using the F3 screen, making sure that you are actually aiming <laughs> towards it and you should be fine with it. Oh, and don't count towards not dying, as I said I already died once at two and two and a half almost thousand levels, now I'm at 1800 levels, I'm not expecting to live <laughs> with the updates I'm getting on my computer. It doesn't matter. Okay, so let's keep continue AFK in here. Okay guys, so we are here the next day. It's me, Agnemo's alter ego. <laughs> Gnemo is AFK. Uh, before we see design, let me show him. As you can see, he's slaying those fishes, you can't really tell. That's why we need the counter, so at least we know it all works. Because the lag can be real, and now I notice the lag is very, very bad. So as you can see, like, my connection is not bad, I mean, you can see all the fishes dying. However, there are issues with me placing blocks and removing blocks, and I'll try to replicate them over here. Just by showing you what can happen if you have a lot of net lag, so your client gets out of sync with your server. Sorry guys, I couldn't get it to work the first time, you know, the net lag is very, very unpredictable, let's try again. As we can see, the gardens are dropping, I can see them, I can see them moving, which means that all the information is being sent to me. You can see blocks don't drop, and we can see the counter is still working, so my other account is actually having a good connection on the other end. You can see now <laughs> my blocks started showing up on my hotbar, because now the, player is now the server is actually placing those blocks that I placed about two minutes ago. It's really, really kind of funny. I don't know. Okay, see? Now they place the blocks that they just punished in. So this is kind of... Ah, this is really trippy. Now I can remove these blocks, and I'll probably need to wait another two minutes just to get them blocks to show up. So let me guys cut off here, and we'll see each other in a moment. Okay, the two and a half minutes have passed, <laughs> and now we can see we have magnets in vanilla. That's really awesome. It looks like a magnet, yeah? Just pulling those items, but the thing is, according to the server side, I'm next to those blocks just punching them at this point. It's just <laughs> really trippy. And now I got stuck in a position loop, so the player just tries to adjust my position. I think something went out of sync and the server noticed it. And see, now I'll be like in this infinite loop until my connection goes back to normal. <laughs> okay, no fun. Okay, let me try to re-log and maybe we'll get something else. You might be wondering what are these iron blocks doing here? Those are just retextured black concrete, because working with black concrete is almost impossible. So I just thought to myself, okay, the easiest way to do it is just retexture it to something brighter and then we can just work with it this way. So let's try to do it again, because I'm desynced again and will be, now I know what exactly what to do, so let's place a line of blocks, like so. The speed one is very easy to place them roughly in the same one by one, and then just break them all. You can see nothing happens, my hotbar is just head still, I just basically I get rid of the blocks, but they can come back to my inventory. And well, now they are back, so now they are building with these blocks. We rotate. Uh, yeah, you can see that the blocks are being placed, although I'm not over there. That's really awesome. <laughs> it's like, it would be cool if this was like a real thing in vanilla, so we can do it from the distance. That would be cool. And now I should be breaking those blocks. Oh yeah, and they should be back into my inventory, because I'm technically there. Real magnets in vanilla Minecraft. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. And my connection. My connection is good because the garden killed counter is still going up, which means that the other two servers are actually doing pretty well. Oh, I got stuck in a elytra mode. 
Okay guys, so we are here in the planning test world when I do the nether side of the build and I just generated, as I said, this is just a random desert hills biome that I just used. This, I found this location very, very fitting with all these overhangs around it and that would be where essentially our temple would go. So what I did, I just pillared up up to this location roughly. So we are in the middle and created this ellipsoid so that the top doesn't reach the bedrock level in the overworld. So if we go up quickly, we can see that this is essentially the bedrock level for the actual nether. I made a sphere we were using blue concrete for that. And here I made another subsphere starting from this position. I just made a sphere. And this will be essentially our moon because leaving the sky just open doesn't really look good. So I thought, okay, let's make the moon around this point, and then I figure out what would be the initial point for the sphere, and then I just generate it and cut off to make and texturize it a little bit so it looks like moon. If you put the picture side by side. And did you know we had a vein miner? <laughs> I also tried to extract the sphere from the surrounding desert. And got a little bit of an accident, I just realized after quite a bit of actions that... Because you can't really fill it in, because it's a weird shape. So I installed the vein miner, but the vein miner goes through blocks and generates this weird mess. So I'll probably need to cut it off from the actual world that I have backup, so that's fine. That's nothing wrong with that. And that will be our new look for the nether. The only thing that we need to do, so the piston bolt's gonna come out a little bit direct from this position. So probably rest it against this hill. The only thing we need to figure out is how to spawn proof it because you have lots of places. I don't care about pigment spawning. I care mostly about uh, gas spawning and this kind of stuff. Oh, and one more thing. I just started playing with Schematica because I thought, okay, let's do it to the point that we can actually physically do it, physically recreate it because doing it block by block would be the death of me and I'll probably rage quit a thousand times and quit playing Minecraft three times in the process. I would want to do it manually just by looking at the screen. So I try to play with Schematica. I love it. I love it. It's an awesome mod. allows you to essentially overlay what your plans are in the other world. And then you can just... Because this is a guide. It's awesome. It's awesome. This will actually allow us to do it. Yeah. So now let's check the overworld plans. Isn't it looking just gorgeous? Gorgeous. <laughs> 